So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the Beer-Lambert law, or just as it's most normally called in chemistry, Beer's law. Um, there's a joke in there. I'm not going to make it. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Lambert's law because it was the first one to come along. Um, Johann Heinrich Lambert figured out that the amount of uh, light that's absorbed by a material is directly a por proportional to how thick that material is. Obviously, if you're trying light to get light to go through a very thick piece of material, whatever it is, solution, uh, glass, or whatever, less light's going to get through the thicker it is. And, and you can see that with the ocean, for example. The deeper you go in the ocean, the less light gets down there. Okay? More of it is absorbed as you go. So that seems to make sense based on observations. Uh, it was kind of a big deal, and it is mathematically directly proportional. Okay, so the thicker the material is, uh, the less the absorbance will be. Uh, August Beer discovered a little bit later on that not only is the absorbance related to how thick the material is, but also uh, it's directly proportional to the concentration of whatever the absorbing species is in a solution. So as a solution becomes more concentrated, it will absorb more light. And you can see that. You can tell sometimes by looking at uh, Kool-Aid, for example, if it's if it's very dark compared to very light, you know, oh, this is going to taste really strong, or it's not going to have as strong a taste. Same thing with tea, right? Tea that's been steeping for quite a while is very dark because it's got a lot more stuff dissolved in it. And so that's what Beer's law takes a look at. So the Beer-Lambert law then combines the two of those uh, into one law, and we get this very famous equation: A equals epsilon times L times C. A is the absorbance of the solution, and that's equal to something called the molar absorptivity constant. Sometimes it's called uh, the, the molar uh, extinction coefficient, and sometimes it's, it's got a, a bunch of different names. And then L is the path length, and C is concentration. Okay, So this relates those two. Now, the, the idea of this molar absorptivity constant, this epsilon value, uh, sometimes called the molar extinction coefficient. It's different for every absorbing species. So each substance, whether you're talking about, say, copper two ions, which tend to have a bluish color, or iron three ions, which tend to be sort of a straw yellowish orange color, uh, or permanganate ions, which are purple, uh, each of those substances, each of those ions that absorbs light has a different value for epsilon. Okay. Sometimes it's difficult to use because you have to go look it up, and, and sometimes it's very difficult to find, especially if you're working with something um, for which epsilon hasn't been uh, confirmed yet. Okay. But there's an easier way to figure out what this value of epsilon is. Now, the, the equation A equals epsilon LC is already in slope-intercept form. So Y equals MX plus B. A is Y c is x, that means that the slope is epsilon l. Okay, That's our coefficient of x, coefficient of c in this case. Okay, So you can create a straight line, if you do this carefully enough, where you measure the absorbance of solutions that contain the same ion, so they have the same value of epsilon, but you vary the concentration. And if you do that, and, and you have to do this at the same wavelength, which wavelength do you use? Well, if you remember in the spectrophotometry lecture, we talked about finding the ideal wavelength. You want to find the wavelength that that species has the highest absorbance at. Okay, So you do all of your concentration uh, variations, uh, and you, you observe their absorbance at the same wavelength. And then you plot it. Concentration on the x-axis, absorbance on the y-axis, and you find the slope of the line. The slope of the line is epsilon times L. Now, here's the even nicer thing about this. If you use a traditional standard size cuvette, remember the cuvette is the thing that holds your solution. It's uh, usually a rectangular solid looking test tube. It's made out of plastic, but it's rectangular. It's not round, not cylindrical like uh, regular test tubes because we want the path to be uniform across this thing. Uh, most cuvettes have a side length of one centimeter. And since we know that there's a direct proportionality between how thick the solution is, or how thick the absorbing material is, and the absorbance, if we keep the cuvettes a standard size, one centimeter, then that means that L has a value of one. 
And so the slope is just your molar absorptivity or your epsilon value. So you can find that. So you can plot a calibration curve. It looks something like this. And again, the more careful you are with your concentrations and with your absorbances, you can get a very nice straight line. This straight line here would probably have an R squared value of about 0 0.98, 0 0.99, which is really, really good. That means the points are really all close to the line. Uh, you can let a spreadsheet calculate the slope of the line for you, and that's your molar absorptivity. Now you can take a solution of unknown concentration, and you can just plug it into the equation and figure out its concentration based on this calibration curve, which is what we're going to do in, in lab over the next few days. Okay, so, uh, so that's about it. It's not a very difficult law to use, but it's very useful, especially when dealing with colored solutions uh, that absorb light. You can find the concentration of solution very easily, and that's what we're going to be doing.